this afternoon's agenda is a statement by the Vice President of the Commission, the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and uh, Sec Security Policy on the situation of the Uyghurs in China, the China cables. As per usual, uh, you can use the electronic system uh, to um, spontaneously request the floor and also request the use of the blue card. We'll just wait for everyone to settle down. Uh, and I would like to take this uh, slight uh, hiatus to uh, welcome the visitors. There's no wall between you and me. And uh, sometimes when you've got your headphones on, you tend to speak a little bit more loudly than you would normally do if you want to speak to your neighbour. So please, um, we can hear you very loudly down here, so uh, please try uh, and keep quiet. But we're very happy you're interested in our work. So, welcome to the High Representative, to whom I immediately give the floor. Mr. President, Honourable Members of the European Parliament, of the past weeks, we did deeply... Mr. President, Honourable Members of the European Parliament, the European Union has repeatedly spoken about the situation in Xinjiang. We have done this in multilateral fora, such as the last Human Rights Council in Geneva in September and the United Nations General Assembly in New York in October. And I did it recently in my meeting with the Foreign Affairs Minister of China in Madrid. We continue to be gravely concerned about the existence of the so-called political education camps. Reliable and multiple sources research indicates that has almost certainly affected over one million people. Another major source of concern is the use of widespread intrusive surveillance. We understand that advanced technologies relying on biometrics and artificial intelligence are used to monitor and keep files on residents in Xinjiang. This includes the registration of very sensitive biometric data and the widespread use of facial recognition. Credible reports refer to severe limitations to the freedom of conscience and religion, disclosure or controls imposed on places of worship, as well as limitation on religious education and education in minority languages. Nobody disputes the right of any country to take legitimate measures to combat terrorism and ensure security. But to our understanding, the police applied in Xinjiang appears disproportionate to the state aim of fighting against terrorism and extremism. This was also the conclusion of 12 United Nations Special Procedures Mandate holders who analyzed the application of the counter-terrorism law in China and came to the conclusion that it raises serious concerns regarding arbitrary detention, enforced disappearance and absence of judicial oversight. I also would like to recall our request to allow a meaningful access for independent observers to the region such so the United Nations Special Procedure Mandate holders and the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. So far, these appeals have not been heard. Granting them would be an important step. I've been talking with the Chinese authorities in order for our ambassadors to make such a meaningful visit to the region. The war ceremony today will also highlight the importance of respecting the rights of people belonging to minorities the freedom of thought, of conscience and religion, and the right to education. The European Union will continue to express its principal position and to raise its concerns regarding Xinjiang in the framework of its political dialogue with China and internationally, including, for sure, the United Nations stage. On behalf of the EU, I will continue to call on China to uphold its national and international obligations and to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms. Mr. President, honorable members, thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to for our discussion. Thank you very much. Our colleague Bisla Lima has the floor for the PPE. Two minutes. Madam President. 20 years ago, China signed the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and since that point, it has been, um, or the ratification has been awaited. Uh, the situation for civil and political rights has worsened while economic rights have improved, and we 
Note what is happening at the moment with great concern. The internment of Uyghurs in the province of Xinjiang is extremely concerning. And the China cables mean that um, we cannot leave without response what is happening. We are seeing mass internment. We cannot simply uh, state our concern, although statements of concern are very important. Having awarded the Sakharov Prize today to Ilan Tuti is a very important signal showing how important peaceful commitment for the rights of an oppressed people are. The number of Uyghurs in internment has exceeded a million. The situation in Xinjiang is not worthy of a great nation in the 21st century. The Chinese state says that the situation is different, that presence in the camps is voluntary, and some have even compared these camps to boarding schools. If that was the case, what would prevent China from allowing observers from the international community and journalists to visit these camps? We will ask China to allow access to these camps and allow those detained to be released. They have been detained simply for following their religious beliefs or expressing their opinions. We have to ensure that the products coming from these camps are not available on the markets of the European Union. No enterprise, no business, not one of us can accept making a profit from forced labor. It is up to each one of us and our own responsibilities to make sure that happens. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Next. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Ms. Piri for two minutes for SND. President, High Representative, Mr. Borrell, a very warm welcome to you from this House and on behalf of the SND for your first session in your new capacity. We look forward to working with you on a strong European Union foreign policy. China has so far been one of the most important partners of our Union and a central member of the international community. But this does not mean that we can turn a blind eye on grave human rights violations. About one million Uyghurs and ethnic Kazakhs are being detained without trials and without charges, often for no other reason than being a Muslim. Earlier today, the European Parliament awarded to Ilham Toti the 2019 Sakharov Prize. Mr. Toti is a leading Uyghur intellectual, economist and scholar whose only offence was to advocate for peace and the rights of the Uyghurs. He has been sentenced to life imprisonment and could not come to Strasbourg to receive the prize. Today, he was represented here by his brave daughter, Jever, and we call, let it be clear, for the immediate and unconditional release of Ilham Toti. The Xinjiang province has turned into the major center of mass surveillance for ethnical, ethnical, cultural, religious, and social control. Every single aspect of daily life is being monitored. Once detained, Uyghurs are forced to give up their religious and cultural identity. This is standard practice in the so-called re-education camps. China has committed itself to the international human rights framework. We have the duty to call on the Chinese government to release all those currently detained and without any charges. All mass detention camps must be shot and perpetrators of the massive human rights abuses must be brought to justice. We also expect the EU is ready to adopt targeted sanctions against those responsible. Thank you. Thank you, well. ne next Redner. Thank you very much. The next speaker is our colleague Benyon for two minutes for renewal. Uh, thank you, Chair. For over two decades, Ilham Tokti has worked tirelessly to foster dialogue and understanding between Uyghurs and Han Chinese. As a result of his efforts, he was sentenced in September 2014 to life in prison following a two-day show trial. I'm very happy now that he has received the Sakharov Prize this year and is a new Sakharov laureate. But he is not the only one suffering under the Chinese government. Dear colleagues, the Uyghur people have been subjected to unparalleled repression by the Chinese government in the past two years due to their unique ethnic identity and religious beliefs. 
Since April 2017, over one million innocent Uyghurs have been arbitrarily detained in a network of internment camps where they are forced to renounce their ethnic identity and religious beliefs and swear loyalty to the Chinese government. I am deeply concerned that their situation, about their situation. The European Union needs to demand <clears throat> that the Chinese authorities respect their fundamental rights and freedoms. We should sanction human rights violations. The Chinese government has to Im immediately end the practice of arbitrary det detentions, to close all the camps, detention centres and to release the, the, det the detained persons. Furthermore, we want the Chinese authorities to allow free access to Xinjiang province autonomous region for journalists and international observers. We cannot stand by and have normal business with China while these appalling human rights violations are taking place. In my view, this is probably the most, uh, most serious human rights violation that is taking place in the world at the moment. Now, we hope the award of the prize will lead to the release of Ilham Tokhti and thereafter lead to a change in approach by the authorities of China in upholding human rights. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you very much. Our next uh, speaker is our colleague Bittikofer for the Greens for two and a half minutes. President, I want to thank you, Mr. Borrell, for some clear words on behalf of the EU. The policy of the Chinese Communist Party towards the Uyghurs has never been liberal, but in 2014, a totalitarian turn was taken in Xinjiang that has created the worst police state that we have on the globe today. This extreme policy is even encountering some internal opposition as we learn from the China cables. And I think that for a nation of such great cultural tradition as China, it is shameful to implement such policies. Fighting terrorism is necessary, but it's not an excuse for fighting people that want to think as they want, that want to speak as they want, that want to worship as they want. We strongly believe that it's time to end the lies, to end the excuses, and to end the distractions, and to close the camps. We as Europeans must also be active beyond just voicing critical words. That's why this parliament calls for the hold of exports and tech transfer of products and services that are used to enhance cyber surveillance. This is why this parliament asks that forced labor from internment camps must not be allowed to enter into EU-based companies' value chains. And as has been said before, products of forced labor must be banned from the European markets. We call on all EU-based companies to draw clear red lines. They are running a high reputational risk if they don't implement a robust human rights due diligence system that makes sure that they're not implicated in acts of repression. And we also need a human rights sanctions mechanism, as you have uh, discussed with uh, the foreign ministers in the Foreign Affairs Council, and we need that expeditiously. And let me make a last sentence that alludes to Ilham Toti, our, our, our Saharov laureate. He is not allowed to see his family. He hasn't seen his family for two years, even though the Chinese law guarantees that. I think we should all insist that his family should be allowed to know where he lives and to see him. Thank you. Thank you very much for the ID group. Our colleague Bon Frisco has the floor for two minutes. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, President. Uh, dear High Representative, colleagues, along the new Silk Road, which should connect 63% of the global population in the future, China is uh, writing and cynically applying its own rules.
when it comes to the land of the Uyghurs, which was one of the main infrastructure holds, uh, hubs uh, of the ambitious Chinese project that's worth over a thousand billion dollars, this has become the perfect alibi to repress any uh, desire for self determination for these people. So the new Silk Road. Is it going to be travelled by uh, goods, but forbidden for goods or freedom or democracy to travel it? I would also like to point out, Commissioner, that neighbourhood policy has to be designed according to global geopolitical parameters, not just geographical uh, parameters. The history of uh, repression against the Uyghurs um, shows the veracity of a country that has created a system based on... Um, global and widespread control of its population and which feeds on um, people's experiences on in the name of expansion and frantic pursuit of global dominion in the sector of um, artificial intelligence. Social credit mechanisms, um, facial recognition and emotional control even allow mass surveillance of over one and a half billion people. With big data analytics, the Beijing government, on the one hand, controls the territory um, to the detriment of human rights, and on the other hand, um, has huge data banks that bring together personal data for citizens according to a centralized system where the public and private dimensions are not uh, differentiated between. So this is an unacceptable situation, and given Europe's founding values, we can no longer um, limit ourselves to merely taking act of the situation before um, the uh, Uyghurs become all of us. Thank you very much. Our colleague Fatiga has the floor for one minute, 30 seconds for ECR. President, uh, Mr. High Rep. Vice President, welcome to the Parliament. Uh, despite experiments in the domain of economy, China is still a communist state, massively intim intimidating large groups of its own society. Since November 2019, leakage of so-called China cables, the level of intimidation in the Xinjiang autonomous region is more than clear to all of us. Of course, detention camps are not places of voluntary work. Of course, there is a massive surveillance with all technical means. We require decisive action of the EU. Uh, Mr. High Rep, it requires real resolve uh, from our side. Uh, I, I call for a shutdown of, of uh, uh, camps as well as targeted sanctions against those responsible for per per perpetration of, of uh, intimidation. Thank you. Thank you. Fudi. Thank you very much for Gue. Uh, Ms. Villanueva Ruiz for a minute. We would like to express our deep concern in light of the communications uh, from uh, human rights organizations about what's happening in Xinjiang. Uh, we need to look into the China cables uh, in great depth and see what is happening. Our group is very much in favor of defending human rights throughout the world as well as defending the right to uh, protest, which is, even more, which is getting more difficult in a more authoritarian world. We cannot impose the positions of the EU without dialogue, and therefore we would also denounce the projects of the sanctions from the U.S., uh, which is a way of um, submitting others to pressure. The United States is certainly not the most exemplary when it comes to human rights. It, we don't need more sanctions. We need dialogue, multilateralism, and the guarantee for the respect of human rights. We often hear uh, fundamental rights being used as a tool in uh, this uh, forum. And today, as a European, I would like to apologize for not having uh, been good enough to make sure that these get through. No human is illegal. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, but we're not uh, giving blue cards while the, the parliamentary group representatives are speaking. Sorry. Um, yes. Thank you very much. The next speaker is our colleague Castaldo for one and a half minutes. Grazie, Presidente. President, thank you, and uh, thank you, High Representative. Imagine a society in which artificial intelligence uses automatic algorithms and facial recognition in order to decide who should be arrested and put into a re-education camp. These students prisoners actually, can't have free contact with the outside world. They are constantly monitored and they are required to study Mandarin and be re-educated ideologically in order to better, better assimilate it into the fabric of the People's Republic of China. They are given social points and ratings which will determine their status for the rest of their life. It seems to be taken out of a film. Something has gone wrong with humanity and humanity has taken the wrong direction at some point. But actually, no, it's it's true, it's happening today in 2019 in Xinjiang, where more than a million Uyghurs are facing all of this. The aim is to eradicate an entire culture which is deemed dangerous by the Chinese leadership. We want immediate targeted sanctions against those people who are responsible for these grotesque infringements and a ban on export of the technologies that allows this predictive profiling. We now know what the full situation is. We, uh, as, uh, as uh, supporters of human beings, will be uh, recognized if we stand up to the state violence, as was done by Ilham Toti, who, for his uh, great courage, is uh, paying the consequences of opposition in prison. I fully supported his candidacy, and I am delighted that he is the Sakharov of uh, Laureate this year, because I'm convinced it's a moral duty to stand and fight against these people who are campaigning for freedom. And uh, I send my very best wishes is also to his very brave daughter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, please think about the interpreters when you are giving your speeches. Uh, the uh, next speaker is Mr. Gala for one minute, 30 seconds. Yes, thank you very much indeed, President, colleagues. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the Vice President and High Representative, Mr. Burrell, um, for what he said at the outset of this debate and um, also for being present at the awarding of the Sakharov Prize, which was a political s signal. Uh, sending a signal to Beijing is something that we have done in participating in the discussion on what is happening in Xinjiang. I think right across this house we share the same position and hopefully that will prompt reflection in Beijing. I think the messages we are sending are clear. Release Ilham Tohti, uh, observe the provisions of your own constitutions and your own law, uh, recognizing that prisoners have rights, for example, uh, for visits from family, and also observe what you have committed to internationally uh, and the instruments that you have signed. And allow the Special Rapporteur from the UN, for example, into the country, into these camps, to be able to see what is actually going on. I don't think a large country like China needs to treat a minority in this way. They in no way threaten China's stability. They only are asking what any minority has the right to, and therefore they deserve our full support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker is colleague Gerhard for, for one minute, 30 seconds. Hey, uh, President, Mr. Burrell, colleagues, the recently published China cables showed us once again the lack of scruples used by the Chinese authorities in uh, uh, persecuting the uh, people in Xinjiang because of their beliefs. These are the very worst, the most horrendous infringements of human rights that we see in the modern world. And I expect you, Mr. Borrell, and the member states, as you have already done, to continue to speak out clearly against the Chinese leadership in order to clarify the situation. Speak up 
for the immediate closure of the re-education camps and access to the region for independent experts in order to clarify what's happening. For international companies that are working in Xinjiang, we would ask for an in-depth uh, check to see to what extent they're involved with infringements of human rights in order to draw the necessary conclusions. We don't want any products which are the result of forced labor in the European Union, and we want to ensure that there is no access for such products to the EU. Colleagues, it's very important to me that we should unanimously and constantly stress that the respect of uh, human rights and for the rule of law are the preconditions for furthering uh, relations between the People's Republic of China and the European Union. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next colleague is Intervelper, one minute, 30 seconds. And, uh, welcome, uh, Mr. High Representative. I remember you uh, in the other seat uh, on the podium couple of years ago. Now, this case is going to be the first big test case for the new geopolitical commission. Last month, a brave Uyghur Dutch woman helped leak Chinese government documents, and the China cables show that massive data collection and artificial intelligence are now the tools of total totalitarianism. And I think this should be a warning to ourselves as well, that these instruments, if they exist, they can and will be used, so maybe we should also be a bit more careful. Today, we gave the Sakharov Prize to Ilham Toti as a political signal where Europe stands. And unfortunately, it is not the first time that we give the Sakharov Prize to freedom fighters in China. So now Europe has to follow up and demand the release of the Uyghur people held in the camps, because that's what they are. I've heard many good suggestions uh, by the colleagues on how to proceed, but we also have a new instrument at our proposal, and that is the EU-wide Magnitsky Act that was endorsed last week by the Council. So, Mr. Borrell, will you make sure that the European Magnitsky Act will become a reality without delay, and will you also see to it that it will not be voted, or the list will not be voted by unanimity, um, so that no country can veto, and will you also include survivor human rights breach NGOs, the European Parliament and national parliaments when drawing up that list. In conclusion, Madam Chair and Mr. Borrell, will Europe become a new geopolitical human rights and freedom? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is our colleague Gregorova for one minute. Mr. Borrell, we are talking about the recent leaks. The recent leaks that reveal that Chinese ambassadors and high-ranking government officials have been straight up lying to us over the mass cultural genocide that China commits. Yesterday, I have been fortunate enough to meet with uh, Mr. Ilham Toti's daughter, Yever. But it could not have been a meeting with Mr. Ilham Toti himself because he has been locked up in a concentration camp and we haven't heard about his whereabouts or well-being for two years. Yeva doesn't oppose China. I don't oppose China. She just wants her family to be safe and together. At the same time this genocide is taking place, in my country, the richest man, Peter Kellner, has been manipulating the Czech media image of China to look more business positive. Business. Excuse me? If I made this speech in China, me and my family would also end up in a goddamn concentration camp. Colleagues. We Europeans have the power to stand up again, uh, for fundamental rights against China's digital dictatorship. Let's start with targeting economic sanctions. Mr. Borrell, act. Thank you. Next, Aritna. The next speaker is our colleague Grell for one minute, 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Chair. Dear colleagues, all this is unacceptable. Despite the continuous call by, by the international community and the recent publication of documents proving the shameful repression taking place in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, the Chinese government shows an absolute indifference and continues to violate human rights and fundamental freedoms. It is absolutely disconcerting that a country like China, which increasingly aspires to become a credible and reliable interlocutor in the global context, must show 
such a serious violation of fundamental rights. And as if that were not enough, China continues its activity of persecution of Uyghurs and other minorities outside the national borders. This must provide us appropriate reflections and countermeasures. The award we're given today to Professor Ilam Toti is an award that goes not only to him, but to every Uyghur citizen who is fighting this madness. As Europeans, we all must defend with all our strength the rights of the Uyghur minority in the Xinjiang region, as in all the countries of the United Nations. The initiative must not be left to the individual member states, but efforts must be shared to be effective. Thank you. Sorry, we have a slight of a mix-up if you had exceeded your speaking time or not. Um, I hope I didn't cut you off too early. Um, next speaker is the colleague McAllister for a minute. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, the credible reports that have reached us on the treatment of Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang are indeed deeply worrying. Three points are now, from my point of view, of utmost importance. Firstly, the practice of arbitrary detentions without any charge, trial or conviction for criminal offence of Uyghur or other Muslim minorities must be ended immediately. The detained person should be released unconditionally. Secondly, the authorities in Beijing should allow free and unhindered access to Xinjiang for journalists and international observers, including for the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. And thirdly, the full details of persons disappeared in Xinjiang should be released and handed over to their families. In their joint statement issued after the 21st EU-China summit, the EU and China reaffirmed that all human rights are universal, indivisible, interdependent and interrelated. So it's up to Beijing to put these words into action. I welcome Mr. High Representative, Vice President, your clear words this afternoon, and I welcome the draft resolution we will adopt tomorrow noon, especially the call for targeted sanctions. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is the colleague. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Alex Santos. One minute. Thank you, Mr. President. China continues. Thank you, Madam President. China is continuing with its systematic oppression policy and a lack of respect for uh, the most fundamental civil liberties. And we see that in the number of uh, death penalties and the deterioration of the situation in Xinjiang and in Tibet, where there is a genuine cultural genocide, which shows this will to eradicate an entire culture. The governor responsible for the atrocities against the Uyghur population is the same person who led the pacification process in Tibet. That's rather ironic in respect of what is still happening today. We've heard of uh, ideological re-education, torture, forced work, arbitrary detention, and violation of human rights. That is totally unacceptable, and it's crucial that we call for the immediate, unconditional release of Ilham Toti and all the human rights defenders, and that we ban the import of products which are the result of forced labor, and that we should plan sanctions, targeted sanctions to bring pressure to bear on the Chinese authorities in order to close down these camps and put an end to these infringements of human rights. Thank you. I'll call the floor for one minute. This debate is uh, not against China or Chinese government. This debate is about protecting human rights. And today I want to pay special tribute to Ilham Tokti, who was recently awarded with uh, Sakharov Prize. Ilham Tokti is a renewed human rights defender, economics professor, and advocate for the rights of Chinese Uyghur minority. For over two decades, he has worked tirelessly to foster a dialogue and to understand and for a better understanding between Uyghurs and Han Chinese. As a result of his activism, he was sentenced to life imprisonment in 2014. Since then, he is behind the bars. Mr. Borrell, I recall first to release Ilham Tokti from prison, and second, to stop the persecution of the Uyghur minority in China. Thank you very much.
Bardzo dziękuję, panie pośle. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Madame von Kramon Taubadel. Thank you, Chair. Dear colleagues, uh, dear High Representative, when we receive heavy reactions from China, one might think it shows that they are strong, but in reality it shows the opposite. They are weak, because they know what they are doing with their own people is morally wrong. The mass imprisonment and the violation of human rights are just unacceptable. The Chinese government knows that they are also violating their own rules. And they're breaching international treaties as well. China has been endorsing the norm of responsible to, to protect. It is China's responsibility to protect its own citizens. And we need to make sure that they follow these rules and obey to the minimum standard. Here, we in the EU can only achieve anything in order to save the Uyghurs in China if Europe stands together and stands united. We need to continue the pressure and call out China for what they are doing. Without a consistent strategy, Europe will not be able to make any difference for the life of the people living in China. However, it is not only the governments and the politicians who need to follow the commonly agreed strategy, which is based on the protection of human rights. It is also up to the companies and business which are currently making a fortune in China and also in Xinjiang. Without them, our strategy will not work. Thank you very much, Mr. Post. Thank you very much. Now the floor goes to Madame Zovko for one minute. Honorable High Representative, recent history reminds us that when a religious minority is suffering and it's being unjustly treated, the consequences are felt sooner or later as a papillon effect. The storm is created at the other side of the world. The situation of the Uyghur is highly worrisome, and I sincerely welcome this debate. I also applaud the recognition of the European Parliament for the deterioration circumstances these people living in by granting Sakharov Prize to Ilam Toti for his persistent fight to defend the rights of Uyghur. I would like to point out an increasing trend. Today, we are debating about the inhumane situation of the Muslim minorities, Tomorrow we will convene to discuss the persecution of Christian minorities in Burkina Faso. At the last Strasbourg plenary session, we discussed the intolerant approach against Catholics and Protestants in Algeria. This House clearly recognized that freedom of religion and belief is one of the cornerstones of modern and tolerant society. Therefore, I propose that the European Commission and European External Action Service follow this opinion by including the concept of interreligious dialogue in their official communication strategy as a tool to foster peace and reconciliation in its external action policy. Thank you very much. Dziękuję bardzo, pani uh, thank you very much. Now the floor goes to Mr. Glucksmann for one minute. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam President. Well, if you read the Koran, you go to the camp. Uh, if you express best wishes for, uh, for Eid, you go to the camp. If you wear a beard, you go to the camps. And that's what's happening to the Uyghurs right now. Until now, not much has been said. But we have broken the silence by granting the Sakharov Prize to Ilam Toti. But that is not enough. We now have to act. We need sanctions. Sanctions against the Chinese leaders who are directly involved in what is the greatest mass detention policy in the world. We also need sanctions against those companies which are part and parcel of that concentrationist policy. European companies also have to be vigilant. It's their duty, particularly the textile companies. They should not benefit from what is a totally unacceptable policy. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Mr. Bernard Guetta. You have one minute. Well, you can call them what you like. Uh, you could even call them, as Beijing does, a re-education camp. But it is really a concentration camp that one Uyghur in nine finds themselves in, over one million people overall. It's not enough uh, to uh, rage against this situation. We also have to 
call, recall to the Chinese officials responsible for this that there can be um, no continuation of this policy. We need to get back to the negotiation uh, without which there can be no stability. China has to live up to its commitments. The leaders of China cannot forget human rights. If so, there will be no domestic peace, and that in turn will have a knock-on effect on international stability. So be as wise as your long-standing traditions enable you to be. Uh, your morality in means that you have to close these camps. You have to free Ilan Toti. Thank you very much. Uh, David Lega, one minute. Thank you, Chair, Mr. Borrell. We know there are millions of people targeted and persecuted due to their beliefs. And we know that parents are separated from their children and their families are destroyed. We also know that an authoritarian regime are detaining millions of people in so-called re-education camps. And these camps, Mr. Borrell, bring back terrible memories of how similar camps were used in Europe in our own very recent history. We have been too slow in reacting to the Chinese regime's horrible crimes against the Uyghur people. Colleagues and friends, now is the time to stop tiptoeing around China and its criminal communist regime. Awarding Ilham Tokti this year's Sakharov Prize shows that we will no longer accept China's crimes against the Uyghurs. Tomorrow we will adapt a resolution calling for targeted economic sanctions against those responsible for the mass detentions of the Uyghurs. And yet our support to the Uyghurs cannot end with sanctions, because giving up on defending human rights and liberties Liberties, wherever they are threatened, would be giving up on everything that the EU stands for. Let us not walk down that road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now the floor goes to Madam Nina Gill for one minute. To High Representative, uh, welcome back, and it's good to see you here in the chamber in your new role. We are facing one of the biggest human rights crises on the planet. A million Uyghurs are detained in high-security prison camps, subjected and forced into political indoctrination and torture. Those not in the camps are subject to constant surveillance. This is not counter-terrorism. These are human rights violations on a scale we have not seen in decades. Public statements are no longer enough. We seriously need to review our relationship with China, including trade, and undertake an investigation into European companies operating in Xinjiang. High Representative, you and President von der Leyen have spoken about being a geopolitical commission. Here's your moment. Here's, will the EU remain silent or take serious action against China? Furthermore, what is the strategy to ensure that we are prepared to counter the growing human rights threats posed by China's advances in AI and facial recognition technology with no transparency in how the data is being used? Thank you. Thank you very much. I give the floor to Petras Austrevicius. You have one minute. Thank you, Chair. Mr. High Representative, colleagues, China's global economic power is built on the suppression and suffering of its own people. A few months ago, we discussed forced organ harvesting in China. Today, we voice our dismay towards shameful system of so-called re-education camps. These camps are not limited to forced cultural assimilation of Uyghurs. They are also running a massive program of so-called job training and as a result provide a cheap workforce for Chinese factories which are part of the global production chain. While China puts its economic growth over political freedoms of its citizens and chooses assimilation instead of, of embracing its cultural and re religious diversity. I call upon you, dear colleagues, to work together to make the European Global Magnitsky Act as a part of reality. This is why not only to put persons violating fundamental human rights um, on this list, but also it will pre uh, prevent other countries' violators from similar crimes. Thank you. 
Dziękuję bardzo, panie pośle. Głos zabierze pani. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Szojdrawa has the floor. You have one minute. Dziękuję za udzielenie słowa. Kolegini a kolegowie, Czina w Sintiangu zawadzi. Thank you. Colleagues, China in uh, Xinjiang uh, is violating human rights and using middle, uh, modern technology to survey for surveillance over their citizens. What is the European Parliament doing? We've sent out a clear sign by giving uh, Ilhan Toti the Sakharov Prize, saying we want him to be freed and we want the other thousands of detainees to be freed as well. We know that uh, there are many other people still in prison and at risk of the death penal penalties. Um, the daughter of uh, Mr. Ilantotti said that she is frightened and that talking about the situation in China in the European Parliament would actually put him at risk. The Chinese uh, government is responsible for cultural genocide in Xinjiang province and uh, is promoting the idea of targeted sanctions. I would like to n note our request for a new strategy uh, regard with regards to China. We have to have a new strategy which will guarantee and ensure uh, protection for fundamental rights. Uh, thank you very much. Madam Yonchev, one minute. I'd like to express my serious concern about the human rights violations and abuses, including gross violation by the People's Republic of China mass surveillance and internment of over one million Uyghurs that and other ethnic minorities in China, Sunzhen Uyghur Autonomous Region. During the totalitarian period, my country, Bulgaria, also went through a difficult stage with ethnic minority related to limiting its rights. We went through difficult years of confrontation into our nation. Now Bulgaria is a positive example of protecting ethnic and religious minority. I express my hope that People's Republic of China, a country with ancient traditions and culture, a country with great potential, will find a way to protect and to ensure the human right to all ethnic minorities in his territory. And we will allow the European journalists and observers to have access to Sudan autonomous region. Dziękuję bardzo, pani poseł. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Mr. Liberadzki. You have one minute. Thank you very much, Madam President, uh, dear High Representative. Well, we are having this debate, uh, which is basically addressed to China. The same applies to the resolution. The Council and the Parliament will consistently defend ethnic and religious minorities, even when the country concerned is China. The resolution is well balanced. We do appreciate and acknowledge many achievements of China. 700 million uh, citizens have been lifted out of poverty. There have been massive investments in infrastructure, but it's not enough because people need to have their basic fundamental and human rights respected. This resolution contains facts. Those facts have been verified, have been checked. Uh, we are hoping for a positive uh, feedback from uh, China, but if we have to, we might have to apply sanctions with respect to industry and trade. China should finally implement the Convention on Human Rights, which it signed many years ago. Thank you very much. Now cut the eye procedure for people have asked for the floor starting with Mr. Robert Heiser. You have one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, China is a very large country. China is an enormous country with a history which goes back thousands of years. It's a major trading partner. But we should not close our eyes to the systematic violation of uh, human rights, particularly in the uh, Xinjiang province. 
a huge percentage of the population are in concentration camps. We could euphemistically call these detention camps, but internment camps. But basically, we're talking about concentration camps. People are not there of their own free will, and we have to make sure that that is known. I am not a great supporter of sanctions. And I'm sure that, uh, well, we, we know that we're faced with the China cables scandal, but I think that indeed in this case, sanctions will be necessary in to, in to ensure that human rights are. Thank you very much, Madam Ward, for one minute. Leaked government documents have revealed how China's mass detention of Uyghurs and other minorities started with directives issued by the Chinese leader in 2014. Beijing has repeatedly refuted criticisms of its crackdown, which has seen more than one million Uyghurs, Kazakhs and other minorities sent to camps where they're often subjected to political indoctrination. China has even organized tours of the camps, which it describes as voluntary vocational training centers intended to provide students with job skills. Among the leaked documents is a script for local officials to use when speaking to the children of parents being punished. It explains that their loved ones are receiving concentrated education to eradicate them of violent terrorist thoughts. The documents also highlight the extent of brave resistance by thousands of local officials. One hand Chinese official was jailed for trying to slow down the detentions and protect Ouija officials. I'm proud of Labour Party colleagues in the Ouija Solidarity Campaign who mount a regular monthly protest outside the Chinese Embassy in London and I'll be joining them on January the 5th to call for the closure of these concentration camps. Now Mr Nikolas for one minute. Thanks, Madam President. Whether it is in China, Saudi Arabia, Palestine, or the incarceration of the black community in America, we should condemn human rights violations everywhere. But whenever you see Western governments and so-called liberal politicians wailing about the plight of persecuted Muslims somewhere, it's most likely connected to geopolitical reasons. Where were they when millions of Muslims were being bombed out of existence in the Middle East? Where were they when Western armed jihadists were persecuting Christians in Syria? The defence of human rights around the world as a weapon to undermine particular states is not the way forward. There's no doubt about it, but the Belt and Road Initiative, which is, uh, Xinjiang is crucial to, has definitely come into America's focus. The Americans have, have admitted that they are pretty eager to destabilise the area because they don't want the Belt and Road Initiative that the Chinese have planned for so long to actually materialise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now the floor goes to Madam Daly for one minute. Thank you, President. We are talking about the China cables, obviously modelled on the explosive WikiLeaks cable gate in 2010, which was a new model of journalism about blowing the whistle on war crimes and corruption of our governments and letting us know about it. This is different. Here we have an alleged Chinese government source leaking an internal Chinese government document to US and EU audiences in English, not in Chinese, published by a US-based NGO funded by US foundations. A week before that, we had the Iran cables, supposedly from the Iranian leaks, telling us how bad the Iranian government was. And let's be, remember, it was Trump who said he was going to stick it to the Chinese and declare war on Iran. And here we are discussing the Chinese persecution of its Muslim population. I have no doubt that the Chinese do persecute their Muslim population, and I condemn it utterly. But many member states here have a Muslim population which is also being persecuted. Where's the condemnation of that or human rights just to be used for geopolitical reasons? Thank you very much. Uh, there are no more uh, uh, statements. And now I give the floor to the High Representative.
Joseph Borel. Joseph Borel Fonteles, you have the floor. Dear members of the parliament, thank you very much for your contributions. I conclude that the majority, not to say the unanimity of this house, is strongly concerned with the situation in Xinjiang and calls on China to drastically change its policies in the region, including in particular the use of political re-education camps and widespread surveillance. The legitimate and necessary global fight against terrorism should happen guaranteeing the respect of human rights and fundamental freedom. Allow me to express my appreciation for your attention and support in maintaining this important issue high on the EU agenda. And in the international arena also, because let me tell you that China is actively promoting the narrative about successes in combating terrorism in Xinjiang and obtaining strong support for many countries, including the members of the Organization of the Islamic Conference. Let me put an example. At the United Nations General Assembly, a group of 22 countries, among them several European member states, released a joint statement on abuse about the Uyghur population and which was immediately countered by a statement by 54 countries led by Belarus praising China's counter-terrorism activities on the region. So, as you can see, worldwide, it is not so clear for the human, for the international community. And we, Europeans, we are strongly committed on this issue, I think we can say that we are strong power on the human rights defense. We have been firmly expressing our concerns in Xinjiang, including, as I said, the use of surveillance. We have rules on export control of dual based goods and technology, which should allow us to monitor exports in key technologies and check them for security concerns. And for sure, we have raised concerns about reports on forced labor since 2018 as part of our annual rights dialogue with China, as well in any bilateral meeting with them. And we have told our companies that they have promoted the respect of human rights and the application of corporate social responsibility through the entire supply chain about sanctions. It's true that the Americans, the U.S., has been very much active in imposing sanctions to Chinese officials, 28 Chinese governmental institutions and companies for their role in Xinjiang. We haven't done it. We have a different system. You know that I am trying to improve it by launching the initiative that could us allow to approve something equivalent to the Magnitsky Act. We will inform you about the work we have already started. I need unanimity in the Council in order to do such a thing. I will fight for it. So we have to be strong in front of, but also we have to continue dialing. The dialogue cannot be forgotten. Both things are perfectly compatible. But I only want you to be sure of the strong engagement that we have on the, this issue, and I count on the support of the European Parliament. Thank you very much.